Hopefully I spelled that right. And just think of packets like packages of data, small packages. So this ensures that packages or sorry, packets are sent and received not only reliably, or reliably, that's a little tongue twister, but also in the proper order because, you know, you have packet one, two, three, you don't want to get two first or else your data isn't going to be correct. So another thing that it does is it also may bake, break down these packets into smaller units because different protocols, remember whenever we talked about protocols, they want their packets in a very specific format. Well, some protocols actually require smaller packets than others. So whenever that's the case, this transport layer is going to break those down. So basically it ensures that your data is not only delivered reliably but in the right order and whenever a protocol requires a smaller packet or smaller unit of data then this is the layer right here that's responsible for that now let me go ahead and get a new color purple looks good the next layer I want to talk about is the network layer let me make sure one two three four five all right I got two more plenty of space now the network layer is basically going to determine the all right determine best route for data now say that I wanted to you know have a conversation with your computer or I wanted to uh, you know have a session with your computer well there are probably a million different ways for data to be sent from my computer to your computer so what this network layer is going to do is it's going to determine the best most reliable and fastest route now how does it do this well it does this because on your packets there is not only the address of where it came from which would be my IP address but also the IP address of your computer where it's going and it's a little more complicated than that the IP address is the only you know thing that we use but basically there's an address on the packet where it came from which is my computer and where it's going and we'll say that's your computer so what it does is it reads these address and it determines the fastest possible route now of course if you ever heard of routers you probably have one in your home these are involved in this layer right here so remember that routers are involved in the network layer and it determines the best route for your data by reading the address on of course the packet and determining of course the fastest most reliable route to the destination computer alright so the next layer is the data link layer I actually don't like the name of this but the data link layer is the layer wow that's a terrible end that your NICs are on, your network interface cards. Now, this layer is also responsible for checking for errors, so checking, all right, slash here, errors, probably need to take a handwriting class too. So basically, if there's an error in your data, or, you know, maybe something got, you know, haywire somewhere along the line in these, what it's going to do is it's basically going to be like, all right, I can't send that, or we need to go ahead and reformat the data or do something again. So basically, what it's going to do is, again, just think of your network interface card is the main piece of hardware on your data link layer. Well, I don't want to say that because there are also switches, and we'll talk about switches and, you know, routers l later on and the difference between all those. But basically, your network interface card and switches are the two most famous pieces of hardware on this layer. And it's responsible for checking for errors. And if there's an error in your data, you know, maybe there's you know, just any kind of error, then it's going to go ahead and send that data again. And that is another way that we ensure reliable transmission of data between one computer and the other computer. So again, if you say, you know, I have a bad NIC or my NIC's broken, then you can be like, you know what? That means you're, that there's a problem with your data link layer. Learn that crap on, you know, programming tutorials on YouTube. And the last one I want to talk about is physical. Now, this is probably the easiest one to explain and understand. This is just physical medium like uh, cable or fiber optics. or basically any medium this is also you know uh, like radio waves and Wi-Fi and stuff but it's easier to remember physical if you just you know think of cable like copper cable and fiber optic cable right now basically any electric signals that's probably a better way to put it or the transmission of data 
is part of your physical layer in networking and also remember we talked about topologies how different networks are laid out this is also an aspect of your physical layer in the OSI model so that's basically a broad overview of the OSI model again it starts with the one closest to the user experience and it goes all the way down to basically you know till the electric signals are on either through the air or on copper cable so again the truth is you could talk about the OSI model for about you know three hours and you won't even come close to covering everything but this is probably the most basic overview that I can explain for not only what the entire model is but also the different pieces of how data starts out and also how data ends up going from one computer to another basically a very simplistic explanation of how two computers communicate so in the next couple tutorials what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys first a basic example of you know a communication or conversation between two computers using this model and then we're gonna break these layers up and talk about them each in detail so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video by the way before I forget make sure to um, add me on Facebook I got a Facebook now a lot of people were yelling at me because I didn't have a Facebook guess what guys I got one now so boom roasted See you there.